Gracias para ayudarme. No. Oh, y gan, ga, garnachas. Garnachas. ¿Qué, qué son esos? Como... At the risk of sounding overly dramatic, today's Spanish quickie is a lot of most. It's definitely the most advanced Spanish quickie so far. I just got back from Mexico and during my trip, I recorded myself in tons of different situations, having all kinds of conversations. In this video, you'll see footage of my recent dinner in Merida, the biggest city in the Yucatan Peninsula. So there will be words you don't know, ways of talking you're not familiar with. Plus, this is a real conversation so it's harder to understand especially the Mexican dude uploading this video also makes me the most nervous I've been since uploading that first video a little over a year ago I'm nervous because you're going for the first time ever to see me speak Spanish in real life and you're gonna see my imperfections you're gonna hear my mistakes in fact I opened this video with those two specific clips from Mexico for a reason look at them again gracias para ayudarme no. oh, y gan ga garnachas I haven't gone over prepositions or poor versus para yet, and I'm very sorry, it's coming soon, I promise. But bottom line, they both mean for. So I said, gracias para ayudarme, thank you for helping me, but that's wrong. I made a mistake, and I didn't do it on purpose for this video. It was a natural mistake. I'm actually kind of embarrassed about that. Pretty much every time you say thank you for something, it's gracias por, not gracias para. But that's the thing. Did he not understand me? Did you see him laugh? at me for making a mistake? Did he get mad? Did the mistake make any difference at all? No, it didn't. In the second clip, I said, y garnachas, que son esos? Which means, and garnachas, what are those? But again, I made a mistake. Since garnachas is feminine and plural, the correct form of those is esas, not esos. And those same mistakes are also the source of the last most. The idea of you watching this video and you seeing my mistakes makes me the most excited I've ever been to upload a video. One of the best parts of my job is reading all the comments on Facebook, YouTube, and in my email inbox. And while I love them all and appreciate them all, the ones that make me feel the best are from the people that say I gave them confidence or motivated them in some way. And that's why I'm so excited about today's video. Even though I know the haters on YouTube are gonna hate, it's all good. It's worth it. Today, there will be no book Spanish, no verb conjugations or grammar rules. Today is all life Spanish. And in life, Spanish, as long as you understand and are understood, mistakes just don't matter. Are you ready? We're about to eat dinner in Merida. Hola, soy Jordan, and this is a Spanish quickie. Fast, easy Spanish lessons from somebody who speaks your language. Okay, before we jump into dinner, if you haven't seen the two Spanish tidbits about antojitos, you should really do that. You can locate them both at gringoespanol.com slash tidbits. They're tidbits number five and six. It'll take you about 10 minutes to watch them both, but they'll help you to better understand big time what's happening in this video. The direct links to both are also below this video or in the description. I made those two Spanish tidbits specifically so this video didn't have to run too long. I went over lots of the names of foods you'll hear in this video. That way I don't have to take the time to stop and explain them all. Foods can be tricky. The word panucho has no meaning that I know of. It's just the name of a food item. Check out those Spanish tidbits. I broke this dinner scene into smaller parts so you can focus on one small part at a time. That's how you should approach everything pretty much. Break it into smaller parts with movies, with music, one scene, one verse. Okay, let's go to the first clip from Merida. ¿Qué es, qué es pokchuk? Pokchuk es regional de aquí, es carne asada okay. uh, con cebollita, tomatito, okay. salsa de tomate. Viene muy bien servido, muy rico. Okay. De aquí de la región de Yucatán. Don't worry if you didn't understand a word of that. That's totally normal. I'm gonna explain everything, then show you the same clip again. At the beginning there, I was walking up to a bunch of eateries outside the market. This is very common. Usually there will be a guy with a menu outside each place trying to get you to go to his place. This guy said some stuff I didn't and still don't understand, then said menu a couple times, which obviously means menu. I took the menu, started looking at it, and then he started listing different foods. Again, this is very common, actually, usually 
usually they're much more aggressive and yelling more. But this was a very chill neighborhood in Merida called Santiago. He said, Tortas, panuchos, pochuk. If you saw the Spanish tidbits about antojitos, you know a torta is a type of sandwich in Mexico, and panuchos are tacos basically with a crispy tortilla. See why it's better to watch those tidbits first? Then the third thing he said was pochuk. I'd seen this a few times already, but didn't know what it was, so I asked, Que es pochuk? What is pochuk? Then he says, quite a mouthful, pochuk. Es regional de aquí. Es carne asada con cebollita, tomatito, salsa de tomate. Viene muy bien servido. Muy rico. De aquí, la región de Yucatán. That literally means pochuk. It's regional from here. It's roasted meat with little onions, little tomatoes, tomato sauce. It comes very well served, very rich. From here, the region of Yucatán. They're very proud of their regions in Mexico. Let me explain a couple things. First, asado technically means roasted or grilled sometimes, but around Mexico, they usually use that word for when they grill the meat on a flat top. Asado, and any word actually, can mean different things in different places. Next, cebollita. Cebolla is the word for onion, and anytime you add ita or ita to a word, it becomes a small version of that word. So cebolla is onion, cebollita would be little onion. Notice the ita at the end, that means it's a small onion. But in Mexico, from what I saw, they use that word specifically to mean green onions. Then again, tomate is a tomato, so tomatito is a little tomato. Okay, listen, the ito or ita thing gets a little confusing because sometimes it's used rather excessively. Like in Mexico, they use it a lot. So it can literally mean small or it can be just a style of talking. A great example is ahorita. You'll hear that all the time in Mexico. Ahora means now. How can you have a little now? In Mexico and probably a lot of other places, they say ito or ita a lot, even when it doesn't literally mean a little. Then finally, the word rico literally means rich, but it's used in a lot of cases, especially with food, to mean good. So he said muy rico, that literally means very rich, but really he's saying it's very good or it tastes very good. That was really weird for me at first. I still feel a little weird saying it actually. That food has a lot of money. So it's poke chuk, es regional de aquí, es carne asada, con cebollita, tomatito, salsa de tomate, viene muy bien servido, muy rico, de aquí, la región de Yucatán. Which means basically, poke chuk, it's regional from here, it's roasted or grilled meat, with onions, tomatoes, tomato sauce, it comes very well served, very good. From here, the region of Yucatán. Let's see that same clip again, it should be a little easier to understand now. Que es, que es pokchuk? Pokchuk es regional de aquí, es carne asada. Ok. O con cebollita, okay. tomatito, salsa de tomate. Viene muy bien servido, muy rico. Ok. De aquí de la región de Yucatán. Pretty cool, no? Easier to understand the second time? Depending on your level, you might have to play it over and over again. I still had to play it more than a few times, to be honest. The link to the whole video without my commentary is below this video or in the description, along with a full detailed transcript. Okay, let's go to the second clip now. Tenemos el relleno negro, que es regional de aquí. Ok. Sí. Sopa de lima, tamales colados y vaporcitos. Panuchos. Panuchos y los albutes. Muy rico. ¿Y es una sopa de qué? Eh, ¿Qué es eso? Es ¿Huevos? Es relleno negro. Eh, trae huevo, trae pavo, okay. carne molida. Muy rica. Ok. Muy, muy rica. Ok. ¿Puedo tomar así? Ok. Sí. Gracias. Okay, in the beginning there, he was still talking about poke chuk from before and mumbled something. I think it was, es muy bueno, or it's very good. But then he quickly said, el relleno negro, que es tradicional de aquí, sopa de lima, tamales colados y vaporcitos. Then he added, panuchos y los abutes, muy rico. That means, the black stuffing, that is a tradition from here. Lime soup, tamales colados, I'll explain in a second, and vaporcitos, panuchos and salbutes. Very good. He's just listing types of food, basically. I covered El Relleno Negro, Tamales, Panuchos, and Salbutes in Spanish tidbits number 5 and 6. They're all just different types of antojitos. Tamales colados are just a specific type of tamales. I'll ask him about vaporcitos in a second. But I didn't know what the black soup on the menu was at the time, so I asked, ¿Y es una sopa de qué? ¿Qué es eso? Huevos? And it's a soup of what? What is that? Eggs? I was pointing to the black soup and asking what it was. He said, Eso es El Relleno Negro. Try a huevo 
huevo, traya pavo, carne molida, muy rica. That is the black stuffing. It carries egg, it carries turkey, ground meat, very good. This was kind of cool for me. I had never noticed this before. Did you see the Spanish tidbit about yabar? If not, you should, it was a good one. In that video, you learn that they use the word yabar or carry for food when we say has. So it has egg would be yeba huevo, not tiene huevo like we would say. But in this case, he's using a very similar word to yabar, traer. That also means to carry, but I've never heard it used for food before. This is a great example of the fact that as long as you know that yabar and traer both mean to carry, they're both very common verbs, you'd understand what he meant. It doesn't matter that I never heard traer used in this way before that night. I understood exactly what he was saying. Context really helps in this way. Okay, take a look at that same clip again. Okay. Sopa de lima, tamales colados y vaporcitos. Y los albutes. Muy rico. Es una sopa de qué? ¿Qué es eso? Huevos. Relleno negro. Trae huevo, trae pavo. Okay. Carne molida. Muy rica. Okay. Muy, muy rica. Okay. Okay. Sí. Gracias. Okay, this video is running a little long and I don't want to rush things. So I'm going to show you one more clip today, then we'll break and I'll bring you the second half of dinner in two or three days. Let's go to the next clip now. ¿Qué es especial de, las, de los panuchos especiales? Uh, especial de tres más carne. Más carne, okay. Y dos, dos preguntas más. Vaporcitos? ¿Dos vaporcitos? No, no, ¿qué son? Ah, ¿qué ok, son? es como el tamal, como el tamal, nada más okay. que más chico, okay. más chico. ¿Y gar, gar, garnachas? Garnachas es, ¿qué son es esos? como la empanada, pero grande. Ok. Ya la puede usted seleccionar, puede ser de cochinita, de asado. ¿Y qué lleva encima? La salsa de tomate. La salsa de tomate. Yes. I knew what panuchos were by then, but I didn't know what panuchos especiales or special panuchos were. So I asked, ¿Qué es especial de los panuchos especiales? What is special about the special panuchos? He quickly replied, Trae más carne. Literally, it carries more meat, but really, it has more meat. Then I said, Dos preguntas más. ¿Y vaporcitos? That means two more questions. ¿And vaporcitos? Vaporcitos was an item on the menu, and I didn't know what they were. But I guess I wasn't clear, or there was just a miscommunication. It wasn't anybody's fault, I don't think. This stuff just happens. In your native language, in your second language, miscommunications happen all the time. It could be your fault, but not necessarily. Remember that. He thought I was ordering two vaporcitos, so he said, dos vaporcitos, two vaporcitos. I quickly replied, no, no, que son, no, no, what are they? Then he said, ah, okay, es como el tamal. Como el tamal es, I still have no idea what he said there, mas chico, mas chico. That means it's like a tamale, as the tamale is smaller, smaller. That might seem a little weird. It was to me the first time I saw it. In Latin America, chico and chica are often used for small. So even though chico means boy, when he says the vaporcito is como el tamal, but más chico, he's saying it's like the tamale, but smaller. This is a good example of not having to understand 100% of the words to know exactly what he said. Whatever he said in that blank space didn't matter really. It's like a tamale, but smaller. Then I asked my second question, Igar Garnachas, que son esos? Which as you saw before means, and garnachas, what are those? But again, that's a mistake. It would have been better for me to say, que son esas, not que son esos. He answered clearly, garnacha es como la empanada pero grande. Garnacha is like the empanada but big. I covered empanadas in Spanish tidbit number six. I said, okay, which is very common throughout Latin America. Say okay and you'll be perfectly understood. He mumbled something, but I heard seleccionar, which means to select, then and puede ser de cochinita, de asado, means it can be de cochinita, which is a type of pulled pork, or asado, which means grilled meat. So he was listing stuff I could get inside the empanada. Even though I didn't understand him perfectly, I still knew exactly what he was saying. I asked what something was, he answered, then started listing stuff I could put inside it. Then I asked, ¿Y qué lleva encima? And what does it carry, or have, on top? I knew in Mexico they put stuff on top of their empanadas, not just inside, like most of the world. He answered, La Salsa de tomate, tomato sauce. Let's see that third and final clip again now that you know what's going on. ¿Qué es especial de, las, de los panuchos especiales? Uh, especial de tres más carne. Más carne, carne. okay. 
Y dos, dos preguntas más. ¿Vaporcitos? ¿Dos vaporcitos? No, no, ¿qué son? Ah, ¿qué ok, son? es como el tamal, como el tamal, nada más okay. que más, okay. chico, más chico. ¿Y gan, ga, garnachas? Garnachas ¿Qué, es, ¿qué son es esos? como la empanada, pero grande. Ok. Ya la puede usted seleccionar, puede ser de cochinita, de asado. ¿Y qué lleva encima? La salsa de tomate. La salsa de tomate. Yes. After that, I was done with asking questions and ready to order some food. I'll be back in a few days with the second half of my dinner, but asking questions is usually the hardest part. I'll show you all three clips together in just a second, and you can get a very detailed transcript and the entire video without my commentary at gringoespanol.com slash quickies slash merida one. There were three main goals of this video. Number one, get you some hard to attain real life Spanish practice. Number two, show you and prove to you that you don't need to get poor versus para or esos versus esas perfectly before you get out there and speak some Spanish. Little mistakes will almost never stop you from being understood and getting you what you want. Number three, give you confidence and motivation that you don't need to be perfect and you don't need to have a Mexican accent to have amazing experiences. You heard the way I speak, you heard my mistakes, but even with my accent and with my mistakes, I have wonderful tingle inducing interactions with people from all over the world. I can talk politics, make jokes, whatever I need to say, I can say. And people tell me all the time how nice my Spanish is. Not bragging even a little, just telling you the facts. I speak awesome Spanish, but I sound like a gringo and I make tons of mistakes. You will too. It doesn't mean you don't speak awesome Spanish. Just get out there. Say the words however you can. Complete sentences are not required. They're not even normal. We don't talk in complete sentences usually. Just a few words tends to do the trick. And if you like this video and you want more just like it, make sure you check out my brand new premium course, Conversaciones. You can get all the details at gringoespanol.com slash premium slash conversaciones. That link is also below this video or in the description. I'll see you next time. Hasta luego. Adios, amigo. Pokchuk. Pokchuk es regional de aquí, es carne asada. Ok. Uh, con cebollita, tomatito, okay. salsa de tomate. Viene muy bien servido, muy rico. Ok. De aquí de la región de Yucatán. Tenemos el relleno negro, que es regional de aquí. Ok. ¿Sí? Sopa de lima, tamales colados y vaporcitos. Panucho y los albutes. Muy rico. ¿Y es una sopa de qué? Eh, ¿Qué es eso? Este ¿Huevos? Es relleno negro. Eh, trae huevo, trae pavo, okay. carne molida. Muy rica. Ok. Muy, muy rica. Ok. okay. ¿Dónde gusta? Sí. Gracias. ¿Qué es especial de, las, de los panuchos especiales? Eh, especial de trae más carne. Más carne. Más carne. Ok. Y dos, dos preguntas más. ¿Vaporcitos? ¿Dos vaporcitos? No, no, ¿qué son? ¿Qué ah, ok, son? es como el tamal, como el tamal, nada más okay. que más, okay. chico, más chico. ¿Y gan, ga, garnachas? Garnachas ¿Qué es, ¿qué son es esos? como la empanada, pero grande. Ok. Ya la puede usted seleccionar, puede ser de cochinita, de asado. ¿Y qué lleva encima? La salsa de tomate. La salsa de tomate. Yes.